Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today we will talk about uh, matrices as linear operators. That's a continuation of the previous lecture, which was called Matrix 01, and this is Matrix 02. Um, in the 01 lecture, we have basically explained why matrices can be uh, viewed as linear operators, which means they are actually operate on some vector space. Um, and today we will just continue uh, talking about properties of matrices as linear operators. So basically it's properties of linear operators more than linear operators represented by matrices. So whatever I'm talking about you should really consider as linear operators rather than matrices. And linear operators can act not only in, let's say, n-dimensional Euclidean vector space, but in some other spaces, some functional space, etc. Okay, now, this lecture is part of the course which I called Mass Plus and Problems, which is a continuation of Mass for Teens uh, course. Mass for Teens is basically high school uh, course um, for students and the uh, math plus and problems is basically kind of continuation of that we are talking about certain other properties uh, and uh, theorems maybe of mathematics and solve some problems and today is a perfect example because whatever I'm talking uh, today about is usually beyond the regular course of mathematics um, in high school well, I mean it was in most cases as far as I know it's more, more of a like university level, but still it's very simple and very useful. But usefulness is very important in this particular case. Apparently, quantum mechanics will um, is is using quite um, substantially the properties which 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 I'm talking today about. <coughs> okay, so today's lecture is called matrices O2, and uh, sub title is eigenvalues, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, um, first of all, I will be talking about only two-dimensional case. Reason is very simple. I can draw a vector on a plane, two-dimensional um, space, and I can rep represent matrix as two by two, basically table, which is also very simple. But whatever I'm talking about is applicable, very easily applicable to n by n, for example, matrices and n-dimensional uh, Euclidean uh, vector space, <coughs> and uh, also to many other linear vector spaces, like Hilbert space, for example. So in quantum mechanics, it actually um, used quite substantial. Okay, so let me just start with a very simple matrix and very simple couple of vectors and see what happens if we apply this matrix as a linear transformation to these particular vectors. Okay, now, <coughs> my, my matrix is very simple, 5, 6, 6, 10. And I will multiply it by one particular vector, again, very simple vector, 1, 1. I'm using vector um, columns, column vectors. In this case, it's kind of easier, that's why it's on the right of the matrices. Now, what's the result of this? Well, let's just calculate. So, the first row, my first column, that would give me the element 1, 1 here, which is 5 times 1, it's 5, plus 6 times 1, 6, that's 11, so that's 11 here. Here, the second uh, row, first element, that's the second by first, which is 6 by 1, plus 10 by 1, which is 16. Now, is there any kind of relationship between the beginning, 1, 1, and the ending vector, the result of linear transformation? Quite frankly, I don't see any. But let's use a different vector. Instead of 1, 1, we will use to 
3 and minus 2. And let's see what happens. Five times three, fifteen. Six times minus two, minus twelve, so it's three. Six by three, eighteen. Uh, Ten by minus two, minus twenty, so it's minus two. Huh, that's an interesting case. You see, this vector is transformed basically into itself. That's strange behavior, right? So it's kind of a special vector. Now, another. 2 and 3. 5 times 2, 10. 6 times 3, 18. So it's 28. 6 times 2, 12. Uh, 10 times 3 is 30, it's 42. Is there any kind of relationship? Yes. It's 14 times original vector. So in this particular case, matrix is, as a linear operator, is stretching this particular vector uh, by a factor of 14, retaining its direction. You see? This vector and this vector obviously are collinear. This is just longer by 14, the, by the factor of 14. You can say the same thing here, except the factor is just 1. So you can say that this is 1 times original vector 3 minus 2. So there are certain vectors which are not really completely transformed independently from the origin, but they are stretching um, the original vector, in this case 3 and minus 2, or 2 and 3, they are stretching by some factor, by factor 1 in this case, by factor 14 in this case. So there are special vectors, and these special vectors are called eigenvectors, and there are special values, which is 1 and 14, which are actually characterizes the uh, the factor of uh, multiplication. So the eigenvectors retain after linear operator their direction and the eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues, so, sorry, are actually factors which characterize stretching of these vectors. So this vector is stretching by a factor of 1, this vector is stretching by a factor of 14. Now, these, again, very special properties of this matrix, it all depends on the matrix, obviously. So certain linear operators have certain qualities. Primarily, I'm talking about existence of eigenvectors and, eigen, and corresponding eigenvalues. And these properties are important to characterize the linear operator itself. Actually, I mean, I can say that if you know all the eigenvectors and eigenfactors uh, uh, and eigenvalues of, uh, of the matrix, you basically define completely the whole operation described by this particular matrix or linear operator. Okay, so there are certain questions. Do eigenvectors exist for any matrix? Well, that's a big question. If yes, how to find them? how to find the uh, corresponding eigenvalues uh, and how many of eigenfactors or, uh, or eigenvalues or eigenvectors uh, exist for any particular matrix. I mean, we have to really research this type of thing. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So let me just retain this for future, I'll put this here, 2, 3 equals 28, 42, which is 14 times 2, 3. Okay. <coughs> now, how do we research it? Well, let's take 
again, we are talking about only two-dimensional case, but you will see that there is absolute, absolutely no difference with n-dimensional case, or even abstract factor, uh, vector spaces, linear vector spaces. Okay, so well, let's just take any kind of a matrix. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2. This is my general 2 by 2 matrix. And multiply it by general vector v1, v2. Now, what are we talking about right now? We are talking about finding the vector for this particular, for this particular matrix. We should find the vector which is just stretched by some factor that does not change the direction, which means it's equal to some kind of a scalar multiplied by the same vector. It's like here. Vector, uh, matrix multiplied by vector is some kind of a scalar multiplied by original vector. Same thing here. Matrix times uh, vector gives me the same vector multiplied by some factor. So we're looking for vector v1, 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 v2, and number, scalar number, lambda, which basically satisfy this particular equation, where a1, 1, a1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2 are given. That's a given matrix. We are researching how this matrix behaves. Okay, so how can we find it? <coughs> Well, let's, <coughs> let's multiply this. So what do we have here? We will have um, uh, the top would be this row times this uh, column, which is A11 V1 plus A12 V2. And uh, And the second one would be A21 V1 plus A22 V2. So if I multiply this matrix by this vector, I will have this vector. And I want this vector to be equal to this one, which means the first component should be equal to the first, and the second should be equal to the second, which means A11 V1 plus A12 V2 should be equal to lambda V1 and a21 v1 plus a22 v2 should be equal to lambda v2 or moving <coughs> right side to the left i will say i will have i11 minus lambda v1 plus a12 v2 equals to zero a21 v1 plus a22 minus lambda V2. So that's the system of two equations with three unknowns, V1, V2, and lambda. Don't get scared. We will solve it. <coughs> now, when we were talking about system of linear equations in the uh, main course mass for teens. Um, we were talking about something which is called determinant of uh, matrix. Basically, it's kind of a um, criteria of linear dependency. If you have linearly independent equations, then the matrix, th then the system uh, of n um, equations with n unknowns, then the system always have some kind of a unique solution. <coughs> and determinant, basically, not equal to zero, means this is a system of independent um, equations. So if you will take any system of, let's say, two in this particular case, of independent equations, let's say um, 5x plus 6y is equal to zero, uh, 7x minus uh, 3y is equal to zero. Now, this system always have a unique solution because its determinant 5 times minus 3, which is minus 15, 
minus 42, which is minus whatever, 57, it's not equal to zero. If, however, you have something like this, Ten x plus twelve y. Now, pay attention to this is actually double this five ten six twelve. So we don't really have two systems, uh, two two equations. We have only one equation because the second one, if this is true, I multiply it by two, it I will have the second equation. So second equation, as if it doesn't really exist at all. But uh, if you will take the determinant of this, 10x plus 12y, it's 5 times 12, which is 60, minus 6 times 12, 60, is equal to 0. So the determinant equal to 0, which is times this diagonal minus this diagonal for a two-dimensional matrix, <coughs> totally determines uniqueness of the solutions. Okay, fine. Knowing that, look at this particular equation. You see, v1 equal to 0 and v2 equal to 0, which is a null vector, is a solution, obviously. And it's very not interesting solution. Obviously, if I have a null vector, then multiply by any matrix, it will give me the null vector. And you can say that null vector is stretched by any kind of a factor, a null vector. So because null vector times any scalar will be still null vector. So it's not interesting case. We are not interested in these type of solutions when v1 is equal to v2 is equal to zero. We are interested in non-trivial eigenvectors v, right? So when can we have this non-trivial solution? Well, if the determinant of this matrix of coefficients is equal to zero, only then we can have something more than one solution. Because one solution exists, it's, it's null vector, zero, zero. We need more. If we need more, our determinant must be equal to zero. Because if it's not equal to zero, then it's independent system, and there are no more solutions, just one, whatever we have found, which is zero. Okay. So that gives me a condition on lambda because I know that determinant of this of this matrix must be equal to zero. And that actually gives me a quadratic equation for lambda. So the the first thing which I can find, actually, I can find lambda from this particular equation. Now, we are looking right now about real matrices, real vectors, and obviously real scalar lambda. There are complex cases when we are using complex variables, complex uh, Hilbert spaces and stuff like this. Yes, we can, but Let's not really go into this because, again, it's not really a, a qualitative um, uh, step forward. It's more calculations, a little bit <coughs> more complex, but basically idea is the same. So let's concentrate on the real thing. So the real thing is, uh, if this solution, if this equation, quadratic equation for lambda, has real lambda as a solution, and quadratic equation can have complex, uh, can have one real or can have two real solutions. Remember, if it's a parabola, let's say. If it's this way, it's two complex solutions. If it's this way, it's a one real solution, but double. And in this case, we have two solutions for quadratic equation. So whenever we have a solution, we have lambda. All right, so instead of going through long and uh, complicated formula with uh, abstract coefficients, let's go back to our original example and see what happens there, what kind of solutions we will have in this particular case. So A11 is 5, 5 minus lambda times 10 minus lambda minus 
<coughs> so it's 15 minus minus 10 mi minus 15 down there, minus 36 uh, sorry plus lambda square minus 36 is equal to 0 so it's lambda square minus 15 lambda plus 14 equals to 0 now do you remember my two lambdas which I have found their sum is equal to 15 their product is equal to 14 and if you remember with quadratic equation sum of the roots is equal to the first coefficient if this is 1 the sum of the roots is equal to this coefficient with the opposite sign and uh, product is the uh, free coefficient. So you can check that 1 and 14 both are solutions to this. Put 1 here. It's 1 minus 15 plus 14, 0. Put 14. 14 square, I don't remember, but in, in any case 14 square plus 14 would be 14 times 15 and minus 14 times 15. That's it. So it's zero, obviously solution. So solving this equation, we will have our lambda 1 is equal to 1 and lambda 2 is equal to 14. So whatever is here is, can be found through a regular research of our, um, of our matrix using this methodology. Now, how can we find the eigenvectors? Now, knowing eigenvalue, we can find eigenvectors. Well, very simple. We'll just um, substitute um, this into this equation. And basically, we will have um, two equations with two um, variables, v1 and v2. However, we know that the determinant is equal to zero, which means equations are dependent, which means we actually have only one equation. Is it a problem? No, it's not really a problem. Because if one uh, vector, let's say 2, 3, is eigenvector, then any other vector multiplied by it, um, by a scalar, by a sc uh, any scalar, will also give it. Because we're talking about um, linear transformation. So let's say you have vector 2, 3 okay? we've found that it's stretched by 14 times let's take vector 4, 6 which is double, 2, 3 and multiply this matrix 5 times 4 20 plus 6 by 6 it's 56 6 times 14 24 and 60 it's uh, 84, right? Now, which is what? Which is again 14 times uh, 4, 6. So again, original vector is multiplied by the same factor 14. So, but my, my point is that if 2, 3 is um, an eigenvector, 4, 6 is also eigenvector, and uh, let's say, let's divide by 3, 2 third and 1 is also eigenvector, because they're all proportional to each other, they're all the same, within the same direction, and if linear transformation is just stretching, so if you have a vector which is twice as long as the original, uh, and stretching is a stretching, it will be stretched by, 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 by 2 times more. Now, how can we prove it? Very simply, if you have, for example, some eigenvector, which means matrix times vector is equal to some kind of a lambda times this vector. What if instead of this vector, you will have scalar S times V and multiply A? Now, um, multiplication uh, of... Um, matrix uh, and, and scale uh, and, and scalar are commutative so basically it's the same as s times s times v and uh, mm, is equal to s times lambda v because that's what a v is right and uh, 
uh, that means that it's equal to lambda times s times v. So basically, um, uh, because they are uh, these are scalars and this is scalar, scalar can be commutative. <coughs> Only matrices, I mean real matrices, are not commutative. Matrices and scalars are always commutative and associative, obviously. So as you see from this, we came to this, which means S times V is stretched by exactly the same factor uh, as, as V stretched, the same lambda. Okay, so whenever I have a, an equation where I have V1 and V2 components, I can have v1, v2 vector, or I can have v1 divided by v2 and 1. If v2 is not equal to 0, then this vector is proportional to this vector, which means it's basically the same eigenvector. All eigenvectors which are in the same direction are still eigenvector, uh, and, and we can consider them as 1. Or a representative of a, s of a family of uh, eigenvectors. Same thing if uh, uh, v1 is not equal to 0, then I can divide it and I will have this, uh, this vector. So this vector and this vector and this vector, they are all proportional to each other. And I can use search for this vector, which means I only s uh, look for, for, for one particular component. or I can um, look for vectors where v1 not equal to 0 and look for this component. So instead of one equation, I mean instead of two equations with, with two independent v1 and v2, but the equations are actually linearly dependent, so I have one equation. I can instead look for one particular uh, ratio. So if I, my equation is, um, now I know lambda, right? So my equation is a y1 v1 plus a1 2 v2 is equal to lambda. <coughs> lambda v1 and a2 1 v1 plus a2 2 v2 is equal to lambda v2. Now, <coughs> I can actually talk about only one of these equations because, as I say, they're linearly independent. I know lambda, and um, in this case, I let's just consider that v1 is not equal to 0. I can divide it by v1, and I can have here 1, and I can have here x, where x is equal to v2 minus divided by v1, and I can have lambda. And in this particular case, uh, I have 5 plus 6x is equal to, let's say, lambda 1, <coughs> from which x is equal to uh, minus two-third, right? That would be minus four divided by six, or minus two-third. So, and, um, and uh, so whenever I'm talking about V2 divided by V1, my second component is one, right? That's the vector I'm looking for. So minus two-third, minus two-third and one is a solution. Now, if I will multiply it by 3, that would be minus 2 uh, I think I, I switched the sign somewhere. Um, so, if this is equal to 1, <coughs> oh, this is V2 time, V2 divided by, okay, so that's, sorry, that's vice versa, it's v2 divided by v1, it's 1, 1, and here v2 divided by v1, that, that's the vector. So minus 
two thirds. So it's a three divided by minus two, uh, three on the top and minus two on the. Yes, that's exactly this. With one, with one, I have. Yes, I have one and minus two thirds. Or if I will multiply by three, it's a three and minus two. I will have this vector. So. So solving basically, I will get the vector which is proportional to the one which I was using as, a, as an example. Because again, any vector within the same direction would be an eigenvector. If I found one, I found all of them. Now, the same thing if I will uh, put 14. Um, if I will put 14, I will get a vector proportional to, so to, 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 to two thirds. Don't want to waste time on this, that's obvious. So that's how we basically solve the problem of finding um, solutions, like find, finding eigenvalues and, um, and eigen, uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Uh, OK, so we can actually answer all the questions. Now, do, eigen, do eigenvectors exist? Well. Well, it depends on uh, whether we will find um, s uh, real solutions uh, of our um, equation for lambda. Lambda is a quadratic equation, so if we will find uh, real solutions, we will find uh, real um, eigenvalues and from that eigenvectors. Um, how many? Okay, that's an interesting, how many? Well, um, first of all, we are talking about two-dimensional case and how many uh, lambdas exist, no more than two, obviously, because we were talking about quadratic equation. If we are talking about n-dimensional case, then our determinant, our matrix would be n by n matrix, and I will have lambda everywhere on the main diagonal, and that would be a, an equation polynomial of um, nth degree. And it has no more than n real solutions, and equals exactly equal if you consider complex uh, numbers, but if it's real, no more than n. So that's the answer, basically. No more than n um, eigenvalues exist in n-dimensional uh, Euclidean space. Um, what else? And how to find eigenvectors? Well, if you have eigenvalue, then you just have this linear equation and you get eigenvector the same way as we did it. Okay, basically that's it. And I would just like to solve a couple of very simple problems. Um, first of all, first problem is about diagonal matrices. Diagonal means nothing uh, not equal to zero except, so everything is zero except main diagonal, which means matrix has this way. And let's talk about two-dimensional case. So if I will multiply it by v1, v2, I will have a1 times uh, v1 plus 0 times this, okay? And this one, 0 times v1 is 0 plus a2 to v2. That's what we have, right? And I would like this to be equal to lambda times v1, v2. Okay, so what kind of um, eigenvalues um, we can find? Well, going back to our original equation, remember? a11 minus lambda times a22 minus lambda minus uh, <coughs> a1, 2, a2, 1 equals to 0. This was the um, determinant of the matrix. matrix. <coughs> and if this is equal to 0, then I have this. So I have only two solutions. Lambda 1 is equal to a1, 1, and lambda 2 is equal to a2, 2. Okay, so let's consider the first case. When can be, if this is a11, when this can be equal to this? Well, in a very simple case, vector 1, 0. We 
because a to 2 would be multiplied by 0, which means if I will multiply this, a11 one, one. a11 one, one. and this will be 0 and that's exactly the same thing as this if I will multiply 1 0 by a11 one, one, I will have a11 a, one, one times 1 and a11 one, one times 0 but it's still 0 so I can very easily put this as a to 2 because it's still 0, right? So, <coughs> this vector would be an eigenvector for a11. One, one. And for a to 2, if I will use the second a to 2, obviously to get lambda to a to 2, I have to put the vector um, 1, 0, I mean 0, 1. So a11, one, one, a22, two, two, v1, v2 would be equal to a22, two, two, v1, v2 when, when v1 is equal to 0 and v2 is equal to 1. So this vector, 0, 1. This vector 0, 1 would be an eigenvector. So we came to a conclusion so that if we have a matrix like this, it has two um, eigenvalues, exactly these ones, and uh, two vectors which are eigenvectors are the vectors along two. Euclidean axis. Obviously, if 0, 1 is, for instance, eigenvector 0, 2 and 0, 5 will also be the same eigenvectors because along this main um, axis, vectors are just stretched by a diagonal matrix. And along the uh, another axis, uh, they're also stretched, so uh, the coefficient for the, the first axis would be a11, one, one, coefficient for the second eigenvalue would be a22. Now if a11 one, one is equal to a22, two, two, if they are equal, then basically that's and that's equal to lambda basically. So obviously any vector would, would be would be good enough. Because the uh, diagonal matrix with equal elements is basically the same thing as unit matrix, right? It's just unit matrix multiplied by some number. So if you have <coughs> lambda 0, 0, lambda that's the same thing as lambda times 1, 1, 0, 0 and this is a unit operator multiplied by any vector would not change it which means it will just stretch it by lambda any vector not only main axis okay and uh, so that's my first problem the second problem is prove that if my um, matrix is symmetrical then there are always uh, real eigenvalues so this is symmetrical matrix which means along the main diagonals numbers can be different but opposite symmetrical numbers uh, around the main diagonal should be equal to each other and that can be for n, n by n matrix as well now in this case well, I will prove it only for a two-dimensional case. So, in a two-dimensional case, again, let's consider this particular equation. Just open <coughs> um, Now, the main equation would be um, would be what? Uh, it's lambda square minus a11 one one plus a22 two two lambda minus a12 a21 is equal to zero, right? <coughs> okay, what's the 
um, when this quadratic equation has uh, real values, when it's discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero, right? Then we will have um, real real roots of this equation. So square of this would be a11 square plus a2 uh, um, two, two square um, plus 2a11 a22. Two, two. That's square of this minus 4, um, which is what? <coughs> b square minus uh, 4ac. a is equal to 1, so it's plus 4a12, a2, 1, something like this. Um, should be more than that. Uh, square minus four A one. which is basically, well, this is positive, right? If matrix is symmetrical, then A12 is equal to A21, which means this is positive, and this is positive. So uh, I will always have, well, non-negative. So I will always have non-negative discriminant, and, uh, well, basically that's it, which means we have real um, roots of the quadratic equation. So again, when we have a symmetrical matrix like this, we always have real um, eigen, eigenvalues and therefore uh, real eigenvectors. Okay, well, basically it's very important kind of material, I would say, because it is, as I was saying, linear operators can be viewed as defined by its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, by the way, another name is characteristic value and characteristic um, vectors. Eigen comes from some German word, which means own, which, which means actually the characteristic representation. Now, I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, because always every lecture has detailed notes. It's presented on unisor.com. You choose the course, Mass, Plus, and Problems. Go to Matrix Part, and this is Matrix 02. So there is a video presentation and there is a, um, there are some notes. So I suggest you to read these notes. Um, there are no advertisements, there is everything is completely free, so don't be afraid. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.